Hello everyone, I'm Dad Machima from Dad and Kids Play One, and this is the final installment of Ragoff for the NES. This is a walkthrough of the full game from start to finish. We're going to show you tips on how to find every item in the game and how to defeat all the bosses. So with that being said, let's get started. With Def Piker defeated, it's time for us to make our way to the end of the game. To get there, we need to journey back to Gorlaz then make our way to the Valley of Rosa. So with the blessing of the Endora Gods and with the Pegasus Flute in hand, we now have the means to reach the Sky Palace. Be mindful of the Epilicons here. Now make your way across the gap, then proceed to climb down the rope. Now if you need to rest for a bit, now is the time to pay a visit to the Endora God at the top. Use the grappling hook to help you get there. From here, use the grappling hook to climb down and then let's proceed back to Gorlaz. Climb down the rope and then go to the right. Now drop down, head to the left, then climb down the rope. At this point, go to the right, then climb down the rope, then keep going to the right. So yeah, this will be the last trip through the Grand Mountains. This journey was definitely fun while it lasted. Keep heading to the right. We need to reach the upper level here. Climb up the second road, then head to the left for the entrance of Gorlaz. This will be our final journey through Gorlaz. So from here, we will go up and take the path at the right. If I'm right, the shrine to the Valley of Rosa should be two screens over. Head north, then let's use the wind pulley here. Positioning Ragar in the overhead view is very weird. Once you hear the clicking sound, cross over then take the immediate path to the right. From here, head upwards then enter the lion shrine to start the level. The end is near. You guys should know the routine by now. Proceed to the right and take out the flying merman as you go. The merman shouldn't pose much of a threat now since Ragar can one shot them. It's fascinating how this game was open world the whole time and I had no idea. The combination of side view and overhead levels are brilliant in my opinion. Anyways, keep going to the right and climb up the first rope you encounter. Take out the moblin and when you get to the second door, use the grappling hook twice. Now defeat the two moblins, then use the grappling hook from the right side. Continue to grapple your way up, like so. Now at this point, we can see the Sky Castle, and from the looks of it, there's no way to get there. But there is a way. If you go into the pause menu and select the Pegasus Flute, choose to play it. Now 
Now when you unpause the game, you will see a newly revealed door. Climb the rope and make your way to the Sky Palace. Here's the final location of Ragor. We have like maybe four new enemies to encounter and that includes the boss as well. From the start, go to the right. We have several screens to move across before we enter the maze. Nothing here. Keep going to the right. Keep moving. This level has some eerie music. Alright, we're almost there. Head to the north a bit and when you reach the wall, go to the right. From here, we go north. Keep moving up until you reach the door on the left wall. Enter the door to start the maze. Now, this foe is called Shadow Beast B. All the Shadow Beasts are strong and shouldn't be taken lightly. Head up a bit further to encounter Shadow Beast C, who fights a lot like the Rago. Take him out, then go through the door on the left wall. Here is Shadow Beast A, which moves like the Jarmans. Quickly take it out, then head down. Now take out two more Shadow Beasts, then proceed through the door on the left wall. Take out the Shadow Beast. If you need to recover, take the path to the south in order to reach the Endora God. Now go through the door on the right and continue to the next door. Now let's head back from where we came. Go to the left. Head upwards until we reach the room with the four doors. Once you reach there, go through the left door. In this area, we have to head south, then use the wind pulley to cross over the two chasms. Do so, and when you reach the end, go through the door on the right wall. Take out the Shadow Beast and keep heading to the right. Now destroy the two Shadow Beasts here, then go through the south door. At this point, we need to walk across two screens to reach the door on the left wall. Now we're almost there. Head north, then take out all Shadow Beasts that you see. As you can see, I have Ragar at his maximum power. Anyways, we have to use the Wind Pulley to cross the next chasm. Be careful of the Shadow Beasts when coming off of the Wind Pulley. Defeat both of them, then head through the door at the north. Now go through one more door, then take out Shadow Beast B. Now hurry through the door on the right wall to avoid Shadow Beast C. Alright, here it is. Use the crossbow, then make your way over to Lagor Sky Temple. Now is a good time to recover health and to cast the attack and a sail spell. The time has come to put an end to Lagor once and for all. The Lagor fight is very easy. Just hit him nine times with the attack and the cell spell, and he's defeated. That's it. You've won, and the battle is finally over. With Lagar defeated, peace has finally returned to Argus, and our hero can return to his rest. Now, you notice the ending is in black and white, 
but that's an actual glitch from defeating the final boss with the attack and a cell spell. I did manage to throw in a color version of the ending for the sake of completion. Well, that's it. I had a blast playing this game and providing post commentary for the gameplay. Hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did creating it. Once again, I'm Dad Mashima, and we'll see you next game.